Alright, so this was my fight in Buriram. And <laughs> I fought the night before in uh, Korat. So this guy who just yelled at me and told me to clinch either has heard about me or saw me. Uh, but he's putting money on the fight, so he's very excited. You can hear the crowd is like rattling. The fight right before mine ended in a draw. Um, that everyone had put money on the fight, so they were all muttering about it, because when there's a draw, nobody makes any of their money. So this is uh, Loma's father. Loma Lukbunmi is someone I've fought four times. She's the best fighter at my weight in the world. She's amazing. And that's her on the right in my corner. So this woman I'm fighting, there had been some debate about whether or not we were going to fight. Uh, when you come up to a son, they kind of like match you up and then they put money on the fight and you decide whether or not you're going to go and she had worn this like enormous jacket to make herself look really small and then acted afraid of me um and then she got in the ring and had like neck tattoos and stuff she was not she was not the timid little girl she was trying to make herself seem uh but i had gotten cut in my fight the night before very very small on my forehead from a head clash but it bled a lot so some of the gamblers from my night before were here tonight and knew that I had been cut because they'd seen it. So there was a lot of like talking about that. Um, I didn't wear my Moncon because of the cut. Um, I put a little piece of tape on it just to keep it closed. Um, but I was afraid that by putting the Moncon on it might uh, like just pull the skin a little bit and it would start bleeding. So. Uh, first time I fought without a Moncon in probably 150, maybe 160 fights. I don't know if I've ever fought without one, actually. But you can see my opponent actually has quite a nice Ramoy. She's got this nice bounce that she's doing. She's very confident, like 180 from the way she was behaving prior to the fight, which I think she was doing for gambling purposes. If you pretend to be very afraid and like, oh, I don't think I can beat your girl, people will put more money. Um, but she's bigger than me. I think she's maybe like 52, 53 kilos. Um, I'm like 47. I also haven't fought in a t-shirt in a really long time, so if I had been wearing my regular tank top that I fight in, which was wet from the night before so I didn't have it, um, we would have looked like a very different pairing because I'm covered in tattoos. <laughs> I could feel her doing that Ramoy behind me, but I couldn't see it, so it's cool to see it now. People were excited about it. The, uh, the announcer is in this bottom right corner, you can see. Uh, I think he was also the promoter. He was very excited. People always like this part of my runway from Master K. It's, you're like the stalker. <laughs> She's tough. She's acting like I dropped an arrow that she picked up. That's not, that's not what I was doing. So I pretty much just did not want my cut to open in this fight, but was resolved that it might happen. Um, so Loma's father, uh, Lumbunmi, he had told me, try to make it go past two rounds, but just knock her out whenever you can. Um, I think for gambling purposes, he wanted to go at least two rounds for the odds, but they did have a side bet on this. So he would get money either way just by winning. And uh, she came at me. <laughs> like this with a kind of aggression that I have not uh, had in a while. She punches very hard but a little bit wide. So I was pretty much trying to like figure out my distance. Uh, I wasn't really afraid of her but I definitely did not want to get caught by one of those punches just by not being guarded or whatever. She goes though, man. Like when you're right in front of her and she's charging at you. <laughs> um, I could see openings as she was coming because of how wide she is, but um, I wasn't quite responding to it as quickly. She didn't know what to do with my lock though, but she's very good the way she just keeps me. That was a good turn though. This referee was really good. He let the clinch go. 
um, for all the fights. They pretty much just let you do whatever your tactic is. Here, I kind of almost took her back, but mostly was just on her side. That's a good point. My teeth were working, but oh man, those punches. Landed a good one there. She was, um, she was strong because she was big, but she didn't do anything in the clinch. Like, I don't think she, uh, knows how to clinch, but she's, she's really good how she just keeps moving and trying to turn me. I think she was very surprised she couldn't turn me. She landed a good knee into my ribs with her, uh, left knee at some point that I tried to hide as best I could and she didn't seem to notice. But here, just trying to close in, I'm a little bit sideways. The night before, I had had a problem with turning sideways, um, so I thought about it prior to this fight that I wanted to correct that, but you can't control what kind of opponent you're going to have, so um, I don't think I was thinking about it as much in the fight. That's Loma's mom. That's Loma. She put this oil on her hands um, that you smell. It kind of like opens your lungs and makes you more alert. So she just puts it in front of my face and I basically sniff it. She was very calm in the corner. Her dad is so cool. He's just like this constantly positive but very calm guy. Kevin was telling me to pull back uh, in the clinch because you can make more space and then throw knees uh, that are far more damaging than when you're too close. You can only throw chicken leg knees pretty much. I felt pretty relaxed though. When you have fights back to back, you just kind of have this like, you're rolling off of the last one and you have a very relaxed, like, don't worry about it attitude, no matter what happens. So it sounds like the announcer knew I'm from Chonburi, uh, but no specifics. When, uh, when gamblers were coming up to me prior to the fight, they were trying to find my cut. Like, they were astounded that it didn't have stitches because it bled so much. She's chasing me really good. This doesn't fall into the ropes. But you can see already, like, she's got... She's throwing with all of her power. And, uh, when she misses, it tires her out a little bit. But she's just fading very slowly. These knees are taking a little bit of energy out of her. Um, but I think it's this, like, wrestling part, mostly, is tiring her out. My, uh, my fight the night before, the girl was really, really strong in the clinch, um, and I was locked up, so my arms were actually really burned out, and my shoulders hurt. But once you get into the fight, your body forgets, and you just loosen back up. She's looking at her corner. She's starting to kind of stay away from me a little bit more now. You can see she's a little tired, but she's still throwing hard. Here she's trying to get an angle underneath my arms, but I don't think she knows how to lock, so I'm twisting to pull her. You can see with the with the arms dropping to her sides how tired she is. Um, she has the heart to fight really hard, she just doesn't quite have the conditioning for it. I think she generally in, like intimidates her opponents early with how powerful her strikes are. But getting caught <laughs> and attacked by the little squirrel of Sully. That was good, the way she grabbed my leg and tried to wrench me. I thought I was going to go down for a second. This is Kevin's pullback, pullback. See how it makes that distance and then you can throw the knees up into the body. That was an elbow. <laughs> I threw an elbow! <laughs> With bad intentions. I was proud of that. So, it's Loma's mom telling me to clinch. That's Chomini, probably one of the most famous female Muay Thai fighters. It's uh, Loma's girlfriend. Loma talking so calmly. She's like, pee pee, just go forward. <laughs> Wrench her neck down and near. She, uh, she stays on the outside of the ring, I think, because she's um, a woman. And her dad comes in, who normally you would have like the little kids come in and do what he's doing. But it's just a family that they, ha they brought their fighter and they brought me. And they just all work together. They didn't bring a mat or a bucket or anything. Like all the stuff was in my car. You just go and fight. It's so cool. It's actually the lifestyle of Muay Thai. Kevin told me to drag back more. 
I didn't feel tired, which was really good because I was tired earlier in the day. Um, but when someone comes at you swinging, it, it wakes you up. <laughs> like, ready to go. I liked this ref. He had a cool energy. Here she's trying to, like, catch my teeps because my teeps were uh, hitting her pretty solid. Because she's bouncing, I remembered to bounce a little bit in the nonki style, which I think actually helped me not be so stagnant. So here I'm just trying to move her around the ring as much as I can. Uh, I get a low clinch on her here and I'm able to score in it, which the crowd gets very excited about. If I had just pulled her hips back towards me, I could have dropped her on her back. It would have been very good. But fighters like this who are really aggressive, they fight in bursts and so they need to attack and they hold their breath and then they have to back up and breathe. So I'm just trying to not let her breathe by staying on her. That's my strategy, is to pull her down to the place where she can't breathe. And here I'm pulling back pretty well and landing good knees. So I'm scoring a lot and it's just draining her. So here she needs to breathe and I just need to keep falling in because she'll hold her breath as I attack, but she's spinning out pretty well. Need to keep following. She's trying to breathe there trying to score bigger shots because I've got her tired so just a good knee in her belly will stop her. So here I'm trying to get the straight ones a little bit more and she's holding on really good but she's not really defending herself anymore so the ref calls it because uh, she was getting so tired that I was pulling her head down more and more and it was becoming dangerous for her. Me acting all tough. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a very nice hug. I actually really like her. I saw her after the fight on her way out. She's a very cool girl. So here's the crowd as we're coming down. This guy gave me 20 baht before the fight, which they call an injection. It's when they give you money as part of the betting. So this guy really wanted Kevin to get a picture of us. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but Kevin was not taking photos. He had the camera rolling, so he was just pretending to take the photo. <laughs> but it's always fun to walk back through the crowd afterwards to get a lot of like high fives and fist bumps and weird handshakes. But look at this venue, it's very cool. This is, a lot of places are set up like this with the little stands on the side and uh, you just find a place to put your mat down and that becomes your base. This little girl walking in front of Loma is her little sister, Nong Champ. She's very sweet. So Loma's dad knew I'd fought the day before and he was teasing me. He's like, are you tired? And I said, no, I'm good. And he's like, do you want to fight tomorrow? <laughs> so taking the, uh, taking the gloves off is a team thing. <laughs> 